people Sunday morning. A uh, few announcements I'll make, and there'll probably be more than a few, but if you look at your uh, calendar and uh, prayer list that's in your bulletin, a few things. Um, one is our big fall festival is next a weekend, uh, next Sunday, so I hope you all are planning on coming. And also down at the bottom of that big part of the fall festival, it asks if um, you would bring things that we need for our fall festival, drinks, desserts, coleslaw, potato salad, and Halloween candy for our tables. And so uh, bring one or more of those items with you when you come and help us to uh, get ready for our fall festival uh, next weekend. And then if you look at the top part, you have all the different calendar days. So session is coming up this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m. So session will be advised for that. We'll have that in the fellowship hall. And then, um, of course, next Sunday is our fall festival. And then we'll start setting up, after the fall festival, we're going to start setting up for our clothing giveaway. Uh, and so I've got down Wednesday and Thursday from 4 to 7 will be our setup times. Um, if we get a lot done on Wednesday, we won't have to come back on Thursday. More help, unless we have to come back. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and do that, that 4 to 7 on Wednesday and Thursday, have that set up for our, our, so we can set up for the clothing giveaway. And then the clothing giveaway will be Friday and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, and so get the word out. Um, I've put some out on our social media sites and everything like that. Um, we don't have our church sign with the where we can put it up there. Um, that we're having it, but we can find other ways to um, let people know that that's coming up. One way is um, also to get it in the paper. I'm going to do that this week. So just be reminded of that that's coming up. And please come and help us get ready for the closing giveaway. And then um, the Sunday following, uh, the 5th, we're going to have our All Saints Sunday. And that's when we do lift up those of the church who have passed in the last year. Um, and I'd also like anybody who's had somebody who's uh, been close to them this past the last year, if you want them lifted up in worship, come to me, give me the name, and uh, we can do that during um, our worship service on that Sunday. And then following that worship service, we will have a congregational meeting for the election of the Elder Nominating Committee. It would be a thing of um, anybody who could be on that uh, committee. We'll need two people from the congregation to be on that committee. And then we do have our outreach opportunities um, that I saw um, a couple of the youth putting in our uh, boxes up here, some of the um, blankets for uh, Coastal Manor, and so thank you for that. We have one more week to get those in. Um, Coastal Manor will be taking those blankets up till the end of October, and then we'll get them out there to them. So we have one more week to get a blanket for uh, Coastal Manor. And then our um, Manor House Thanksgiving donations, they need to be in by November the 19th. So be aware of that, they need to be here um, by November 19th. I think that's all for my announcements. Um, any other announcements? If not, we can go to our prayer concerns. Do we have any prayer concerns this morning? Any, you may notice some activity this afternoon, I don't know if you will, um, at the cemetery around 2 o'clock. Um, uh, they're going to have a service for Julian Troha, just a private family service out by the graveside um, around 2 o'clock. So just be in prayer for the uh, Troha family, I'll tell you. Um, they rest Julian uh, in the cemetery this afternoon at 2. Any other? Yeah. Ah, yes. Um, and it's Ellie's birthday. I, I think she, I like how she's decked out for her birthday, too. <coughs> she looks awesome. And so we can sing happy birthday to Ellie. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for being with us every single day. We thank you 
that you help us through difficult times, times of grief and despair, times when we pray for healing for others. And you're also there through those good times and celebrating with us. And so we pray that you will continue to walk with us, continue to show us what it means to be made in your image, what it means to be a follower of you. We pray that you will guide us in all things, helping us to give you praise always for your son who died for us, came and lived for us, and showed us how to live this life even teaching us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is and the power and the glory of God. Amen. And now I do invite the youth up front for lesson. <laughs> himself as Lord. He wanted people to worship him. Right? So the people of the day came to him and they said, you know, now who did Jesus say we should worship? God. God, God right? So people came to him and said, you know, since you say we should just worship God and, and we shouldn't worship the Caesar guy, right? Then why should we have to pay him taxes? Now, what, do you all know what taxes are? Yeah. yeah. For your house or your car, right? Okay, so we pay these taxes, you know, we pay, we, they help us uh, with infrastructure, with building roads and with other things and all this other stuff and maybe stuff we don't really like all that much, but, right, so we, we pay these taxes. And so they said, why should we pay these taxes to, to, to um, Caesar? Why should we pay this money? If, if we shouldn't follow him, we should follow God. We should just love God. And so Jesus said, bring me a coin. And they brought him a coin. And who, whose face do you think was on the coin that they chose? Jesus. No. Caesar. Caesar. And he said, you know what? On that coin is Caesar. So pay all you will. Pay what you will to Caesar. Don't turn to Caesar what is Caesar's. And unto God what is God's. Right? So they were like, man, that's interesting. Like, So if we pay under Caesar what is Caesar's, the money, then what do we pay unto God? So one thing I, we think about is that, yes, in love, we are made in the, the Bible says, Jesus says, we are made in the image of God. We are made in the, so if we are made in the image of God, what do you think we should give to God? Love. That's a good, that's a good answer. Love, right? We give our whole selves, we give everything to God. We give all of this to God. Now, Yes, we have to give some to Caesar, right? And we also give some of our money to help the church and help people in need, like y'all did with the blankets and other things like that. But
But we have to look at our whole life and say, what do we need to give to God? We understand what we have to give to Caesar, right? But then we have to think about what do we need to give to God? And love is a good answer, right? Give love to others, give love to God, and we try to do all this thing. Everyone. So do you think Jesus gave a good answer? Yeah. He did. All right, let us pray. Gracious God, help us to give our whole selves to you. For we are made in your image, and we thank you for that. Be with us always, and help us to think continually what we can do in our life to give to you for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Where do I put this up? Now let us come before the Lord our God and worship and glorify him. Please stand as you're able and join me in the call to worship. In this sacred hour of worship, when we name things for what they really are, we give to God what is God's. Between the demands of this last week and the demands of the one ahead, we give to God what is God's. With open hearts and hands and minds, every innate gift from our loving Creator. We give to God what is God's. Come, let us worship God. Won't you please join me and sing our hymn, I'll Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, hymn number 43.
Sin tricks and traps us a hundred times a day. So we turn to God, whose business is freedom. Trusting that God will free us from our sin and deliver us to safety, let us confess our sins with courage and hope. Doing so for silently, then together, this is the confession printed in our bulletin. Let us pray. together. God, you have always loved us, and we are your people. You have chosen us to be a blessing to others, to promote healing, to create atmospheres in which all people are welcomed and accepted, to reach out in compassion to each other and to all who are in need. But we fail to do so time and time again. Forgive us. Help us to give to you the things that are yours, ourselves, our hearts, our souls, our spirits, our energy, and our minds, in loving and joyful service to you. Amen. Hear the good news. Our God, lover of justice, glories not in punishment, but in redemption. Be at peace. You are forgiven. We are free. Hallelujah. Amen. Join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, in the stories of your scripture, give us truth to cling to. Help us hear your still, small voice. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Psalm 96, found on page 520 of your Pew Bible. Listen now for the word of the Lord to the church this day. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvels, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly 
to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him, strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 through 22, and it can be found on page 23 of your few Bibles. Listen once more for the word of the Lord to the church this day. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Rhodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let us pray. Holy Spirit, come, open our hearts and minds to what you have us here this day. In Jesus' name, amen. When I was growing up, I shared a room with my brother. It wasn't a very big room. Both of our beds were up against opposite walls, and in between us was this dresser that was wedged between the two beds. I mean, so close that I can't even tell you how many times I knocked my head against that dresser. Maybe that's what's wrong with me. <laughs> my brother and I got along fairly well, that is, until our teenage years, and that is when World War III broke out between us. The end result being that we decided to draw a line down the middle of the room, and he couldn't go on my side, and I couldn't go on his side of the room. You don't touch my stuff, I don't touch your stuff. Now, I thought I got the better end of this deal, because how the room was laid out was I had a doorway that went out to the hallway and out to the, the rest of the house. John had a window that went out to the front yard. So... Luckily, we're just a one-story house, so he was able to go in and out that window for weeks on end. Now, our passage this morning has Jesus once again trying to be tricked by these religious authorities of the day. Came to him and asked him whether or not it was lawful to pay taxes. Since Jesus had been saying it, there's only one authority in heaven and earth. Or as we sang earlier, only one, one that we crown Lord of all. Of course, we know Jesus' answer. He asked him to bring in that coin and ask who's what was on it. And they obviously said the emperors, which in our 
translation that says the emperors, but in other translations it'll say Caesar, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's. That's the way we know it really well in our minds. Clever, right? The youth thought so, right? I think they were like, yeah, that was pretty good, Jesus. And while this answer amazes those who are presented that question to him, I believe it also raises in us an important question for us as Christians. What are we to give to God? Is what I ask you. If we were to give to God the things that are God's, what might be those things be? Now you might answer, well, everything we have belongs to God, so we should give to God all that we have. And while this is a very good answer in theory, I wonder how willing we are to put that into practice. Or do we do like I did with my brother, and we make a dividing line down the middle of our life, and we say, God, this is mine, and that's yours. If we consider our time and our talents and our treasure, how might we look at those things as belonging to God? Take, for example, our time. How might we tend to draw a line down the middle of our life and say, well, God, this is your time, and this is my time. Are we simply allotting an hour or two on Sundays for God and keeping the rest for ourselves? Are we in need of giving more time to God? If everything belongs to God, what might we look like, or it look like, to give God more of our time? Maybe it's through prayer. Maybe it's being more involved in church activities, or maybe it's by helping others Whatever it might be, I believe we can all do a better job of giving more of our time to God. The thing is, it takes work. It takes discipline. It takes a commitment to make a con conscious effort to take all the hours that are in a week and figure out ways we can give more of those hours God. More of our time to God. What about our talent? We have all been given certain gifts from God. Areas in which we are naturally talented. Perhaps you are talented, a talented musician, or a talented writer, or artist, or leader. Maybe you have the gift of teaching, or the gift of listening, or maybe it's the gift of discernment or of cooking, or of fundraising, or of organization, a talent I seem to lack. Whatever it may be, I believe we have an obligation to discern whatever gift it is God has given us and then find ways to give that talent back to God. It's another way I think we can do that thing of giving our something back to God, giving to God the things that are God's. What about our treasure, our money, something we never want to talk about, especially in church? But if everything we have belongs to God and we are to give God the things that are God's, then how might we look at our finances differently? Again, I think all too often we want to draw a line down the middle, an imaginary line of our financial life and say, God, this is yours and this is mine. Where we might place our tithe and offering on one side and then everything else on the other. And while we need to be good stewards of our money and God wants us to properly take care of ourselves and our families, I also believe we can always do more. We do more in showing God our gratitude for what we have been given by again. But again, it takes work. It takes discipline. And it takes a commitment to make a conscious effort to do so. Maybe it's bumping up our tithes or offering a little more 
Maybe it's giving a little more to an organization that helps feed the hungry or to various relief efforts. Maybe it's allotting some money to take their friend out to lunch or dinner who's going through a hard time. Or maybe it's giving to an environmental, environmental group. Help them take care of God's creation. Or giving to somebody who helps pets. Help the good creatures of this earth. Whatever it may be, I believe when we look close enough, we can always find ways that we can give just a little bit more by giving back to God in various ways and means to things that are God's. The truth is that all we are and all we have belongs to God. Just as the image on the coin was the emperor's, we are made in the image of God. When we look in the mirror, however dimly, we see God's likeness looking back at us. Give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and give to God the things that are God's. And that, my friends, means our whole selves, all that we are, and all that we have. Does that mean we have to give away everything we have and live like a hermit or become a monk or a nun? Of course not, unless that is your personal calling. But what it does mean is that we look closely at our life and find ways to give all our all to God because ultimately it belongs to Him. Take something as mundane as our car or as luxurious. If we were to say our car belongs to God, how might we may then use it for God? Maybe it's giving someone a ride when they need it. Maybe it's giving someone who can't drive a ride to church or a ride home from work. If our car belongs to God, how might we be more aware of how we're using it and how it's also destroying the Earth's resources? polluting the air. Maybe we can look at ways we can drive less and help out with that carbon footprint we often talk about. Or consider our house. Our houses belong to God. How might we use it for God? Maybe it's having a prayer group. Some of y'all might have a prayer group that meets in your home or a Bible study with friends. Maybe it's having other church members over for a simple food and fellowship, or maybe it's looking at that carbon footprint of our homes and finding ways we can cut back on the energy that we use caring for creation all the while by turning down the thermostat, turning off the lights, and recycling more. You get the picture. Everything we have belongs to God. There are many ways that we can look at our life we can look at our life as ours, or we can look at our life as given to us by God, understand that everything and everything that we have belongs to God, and then find ways to give back to Him. You know, in the end, it took some time for my brother and I to reconcile our differences and to remove that imaginary line down the middle of the room. I don't know if it was my brother just getting tired of going in and out by window. Probably had a lot to do with it. Or that we just found a way to be brothers again. Willing to share our room with one another. Because the bottom line was, we are family. And family means sharing what we have with one another. And you and I are part of God's family. Meant to share all that we have and all that we are with God and one another. May we do so with open hearts and open hands, full of thankfulness and gratitude for this life that God has given to us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
feel safe? Amen. Amen. And now we do contemplate what it is that we give back to God as we present our tithes and offerings and present them to the Lord. bless these our tithes and offerings. May they bring you glory and joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Now would you please join me as we affirm our faith and we use the Apostles' Creed, which is written in your bulletin. Let us pray. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead and buried. He descended into the hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits upon the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From whence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, and the resurrection of the body. And now let us join our hymn singing. Called as partners in Christ's service. And that's an insert in your bulletin. And we're going to sing it to Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. All right? <coughs>
You know, when I think about my brother and I doing that, I, I also think about how my parents let us do that. <laughs> they did not stop us. They let it go on for weeks on end. They just let it play out. And eventually, we understood that we are brothers, that we don't need to do, be doing this. We understood all this. And you know, I think in God, in a lot of ways, just lets us play it out. He lets us make those dividing lines in the middle of life and say, this is God's and this is ours and this is how we're going to be. But I think that he wants us to come around to this understanding, this idea that everything is God's and, and how we can give more and give to him. And he lets us come to that realization. And it's not easy to do. But my charge for you this day is to go from this place and think about how it is we can give more to God in our life. That we can erase maybe that dividing line that divides the two and figure out ways that we can combine them and to give all that we are to God. Because we are made in the image of God. And God wants us to help him to bring this kingdom his kingdom here on earth. Let's go and do that. May God's face, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you, be gracious on you. May the Lord turn his face to give you peace. Amen. Amen.